okay so welcome back to another video discussion that we will be having for today so again welcome back to my channel this is Jomer Adams and I hope that you will be enjoying your time learning today so again welcome back hello everyone so I hope everyone is doing fine so let's start and let's dig into our topic for today so this is actually a continuation of what we had yesterday what we had the uh, last time when we discussed the inborn um inborn errors of metabolism and also the newborn screening so going back again to your RA 9288 also known as your newborn screening act of 2004 let's move on to the different article sections that we will all be discussing today okay so for the information of everyone, your RA-9288 is, an, is also known as the Newborn Screening Act of 2004. So the main goal of this act is to promulgate a comprehensive policy in a national system for ensuring newborn screening. So last time we discussed the importance of newborn screening and how crucial it is in the first, um, in, during the first few days of your newborn. So... Having said that, here in the Philippines, we actually have the National Institute of Health or the NIH, which is the technical arm in the implementation of the newborn screening and other concerned partners. So this is where the newborn screening reference center is actually located. It's actually under the um under the govern uh, under the supervision and administration of the University of the Philippines. So when we are talking about the newborn screening act, we will go through the different articles at the same time the different sections with regards to its implementation, the nitty gritty and in information and details when it comes to your newborn screening act of two thousand and four. So the first one there is, of course, the general provision. So as a parent or a legal guardian can actually refuse testing on the grounds of religious belief. Of course, we do respect that. And when we do that, when we actually allow them to refuse this testing, we actually give them a copy of refusal documentation, which actually needed to be made out when the newborn's medical record is being collected. So it's very important um even right now there's a lot of people who are considering themselves as anti-vaxxers so there are actually some um some individuals some couples so some religious belief or some belief let's just say that um some beliefs that actually doesn't um doesn't allow or doesn't favor this kinds of testing with regards to blood or with regards to newborn being um being tested that young so it's very important it's very important when it comes to that because again everyone has the right of choice and everyone can actually go for it or can, they can just simply refuse about it so when it comes to the collection so the collection of specimen using your um using your your test card should be done after 24 hours of life but not later than three days so after 24 hours of life but not later than three days from the complete delivery so it's very important this is for for newborn delivered either cesarean or or normal birth that is actually considered to be um in a sense healthy healthy but still we still have to have them check okay so a newborn place in niku may be exempted for the three-day rule or three-day requirement but should be tested within seven days of age within seven days of age and maybe you're wondering why is it crucial for us to actually have them tested um within three days or for some some newborn who are in the niku or the neonatal intensive care unit we're actually allowing up to seven days so it's very important because as you as you all know once that the newborn has been delivered more much of the function of their body are already independent to the, from the mother already so most of the metabolize they will be digesting it they will be metabolizing it on their own and if you have certain deficiencies and certain enzymes that will be a big problem for them that's the reason why we need to test them within three days or within seven days for newborn on the NICU to avoid 
to avoid the irreversible consequences of those inborn errors of metabolism. Okay, I hope that's clear. So, maybe uh, some of you are asking, how is it done? So, you do the newborn screening act first by collecting your sample using your filter card. So, what we usually do is to actually use the um, heel prick method. So, we will be um, collecting capillary blood at the, from the heel of the baby. So, a few drops of blood are taken from the baby's heel. And they will be blotted on a special absorbent filter paper, which then become the specimen holder. The blood is to be dried for 4 hours and would should be sent to the newborn screening center immediately. So, the thing that is, you have to collect the blood properly. And one thing that I want to mention is that when you collect blood in on on newborn, you always use the plantar surface of the heat, the lateral side of the plantar surface of the heel. Okay, and I wanna be very much familiar with the lateral side of the plantar surface of the heel. Why the lat why the plantar? Of course, you cannot collect on the dorsal. Obviously, you have to collect on the on the plantar surface why not in the middle or why not on the medial on the medians on the yeah on the median side F first reason is that in the on your in the middle although that is um although you can say that it's actually fleshy the thing there is that you might hit your calcanea calcaneus okay you might hit your calcaneus and eventually would cause osteomyelitis okay osteomyelitis on the other hand, you cannot also um, prick on the median side because there is an artery that is near there, okay? There, there is an artery near there. So, you also want, don't want to hit the artery of the baby. So, again, if you were asked what is the, um, what is the method used, it's the, cap, it's the heel prick method. It's the heel prick method. And if they ask you to elaborate more regarding the um specimen site so if you already have studied your phlebotomy you, uh, you would actually go and actually go up uh, um go through the capillary extra the capillary um collection of your blood and for newborn we do that on the again the lateral side of the plantar surface of the heel so that is somewhere on your pinky down there so you will collect it there Okay, and again, you have to dry that within four hours after collection before sending it to the national, the newborn, the reference center for the newborn screening center. Okay, so afterwards, testing of sample will be performed by the accredited newborn screening center by the DOH NIH network. So, if there's a positive result, Results should be immediately released within 24 hours, and if it is a negative result, release could be re um re results could be given out within seven day working days after the um the national the newborn screening lab received your specimen. And again, all congenital metabolic disorder require a lifetime management, and that's very important. That's the reason why we want to. We want to identify it early because some of the irreversible um, consequences of your inborn errors of metabolism will not just be mental retardation but also death for the baby. So again, I hope everything is clear and I hope you will be going through it for you to understand it better. Okay. So, this is actually some of the, again, we talk about it, your congenital hypothyroidism, your congenital adrenal hyperplasia, your galactosemia, your phenylketonuria, your G6PD deficiency, or your glucose 6, um, your, your G6PD, your maple syrup urine disease as well, and the different effects and effects if not screened and effect if screened and managed properly. So, it's very important for us to to really take note of these things because it's crucial for your baby. So for the effects, if not screened, as you can see, most of them are actually severe mental retardation. You would have death here for congenital hyperplasia. For the galactosemia, 
the baby can actually um so immediately die or develop cataract again because of the deposition of your galactose on your brain, on your liver, or even into your eyes. Your phenylketonuria could also cause severe mental retardation. For your G6PD, like what I mentioned a while back um, in the last video, I will link it also here. So your G6PD, your, your G6PD is a very important enzyme. Why? Because um, it's also is not just responsible with the um, glycolysis, but even in your, um, even in the prevention of your free radicals, the oxidation of your red blood cells. Reason why, again, some would experience severe anemia. Aside from that, we also have your cornicterus. It's also related to your anemia. Okay, it's also related to your anemia because when you have anemia, when when you have this G six PD, it's an abnormal RBC. Those RBC would be, isn't it? What is the what is the um what is the lifespan of R your RBC? That is a hundred and twenty days. But because of G six PD deficiency, there will be a premature rupture either intravascularly or extravascularly, and those would now cause hemolysis within your uh, within the body. Eventually, that will increase your bilirubin. And kernicterus in a nutshell is the deposition of your delta bilirubin into your brain. And that is deadly for the kid, for the newborn. So MSUD, as you can see, it will not even allow us, uh, the, the newborn to thrive because it will die in just a short period of time. Aside from that, we also have the effects. And this is what we want to highlight more. The effects of screen and manage well. And as you can see, all will be alive and all will be normal. And that is how important your newborn screening is. And I cannot overemphasize that because your newborn screening is really important in the prevention of in the prevention of irreversible effects or irreversible damages that would be caused by your inborn errors of metabolism. I hope we are clear. Okay, so the establishment of your na your newborn screening centers depends on the overall demand in the country. Actually, we have two NSC in Luzon, two in, Men in Visayas, and one in Mindanao. So as you can see, we have in the northern Luzon, that is in Mariano Marcos Memorial Hospital and Medical Center. I think that's that. this one is in Ilocos Norte. We also have one in Hangeles University Foundation Medical Center, the AUF in Pampanga. We also have, oh, so we actually have three in Luzon already. So, no, not just three. So, this is the one, the, the picture I'm showing you is actually a more updated um, picture. So, we also have the um, NIH in your by your by UP Manila and it is in Techno Hub UP Ayala Land. We also have one in Southern Luzon in Daniel Mercado Medical Center. We also have in Visayas in West Visayas State University and in the Southern Philippines Medical Center in Mindanao. So that is very important. As you can see there, as there um if you're gonna look at the the bullets that we have here, we also have future newborn screening centers. One would also be um in Mindanao, an additional in Mindanao, one also in your um maybe this one is in Cebu and this one is in somewhere in Albay. So that is where um the future newborn screening centers will be established. And it is again um, very important to have this in our places. So aside from that, we also have the declaration of policy. So the state, in section 2, it states that the state shall protect and promote the right of health of the people, including the rights of the children, to survival and full healthy development as normal individuals. So the state shall institutionalize a national newborn screening system that is first comprehensive, integrative, and sustainable. So as you can see, um, as our population grows, the need or the, the, the demand of your newborn screening test would also increase. Therefore, we also have to um, enhance and heighten up our um, heightened our newborn screening centers as well. 
and these are the so these are some of the policies that we have to observe so let's go on to section 3 and discuss about the objectives of this law first is to ensure that newborn has access to newborn screening for certain heritable dis conditions that can result in mental retardation serious health complications or even death death if left undetected and untreated aside from that we also have to establish um, and integrate a sustainable newborn screening system within the public health delivery system so as you can see when we first discuss your newborn screening it's actually a public health concern okay it's a public health concern reason why we also have we also need to have a sustainable newborn screening system because as again saying again uh, repeating it again as our population grows so is our um, need for a newborn screening center so we also aim to ensure that all health practitioners are aware of the advantages of newborn screening and of their respective responsibilities in offering newborns the opportunity to undergo newborn screening and of course again maybe this is one good um, time to mention this as health practitioner and for you as if you're watching this and you're a student in the medical field med whether it is in your pre-med or in your medicine it's very important for you to be um, promoters or promoters of different programs that would actually better the lives of our patients of our um, fellow men because as you can see a lot of these things are actually very much preventable okay a lot of these things are very much preventable but again that filipino mentality that they don't want to go and have themselves tested or they don't want to have their children tested because it's it's um expensive this is that and that but if you're gonna think about it the th for the information of everyone i'll be showing you later the prices of our newborn screening and it actually ranges from 500 to 1500 from the basic with the six and also the expanded so i am already spilling out the update that we have from six we already are testing or catering tests for around 22 um inborn errors of metabolism and imagine that from 500 to 1500 you can actually save your child's life and you have we as health practitioners need to promote that okay so what do we aim at aside from those things so we also want to ensure that parents recognize their responsibility in promoting their children's right to health and full development within the context of responsible parenthood by protecting their child from preventable causes of disability and death through newborn screening imagine that okay and this is one great thing okay preventable causes of disability and as a parent i know that most of our parents would do anything to to spare us from those disabilities and even spare us from that and we really have to educate our fellow men with regards to these things because if you're gonna look at it isn't it if you're gonna look at it when you hear of g6pd deficiency if you hear about congenital um, hypothyroidism congenital adrenal adrenal hyper hypoplasia mo most of the filipinos won't immediately identify those diseases what we know are ubo sipon diabetes high blood and so many more that's why we have to educate and inform all of them okay so as so as we go along i uh, will be defining some key um terms that is very important for us to comprehend the newborns screening law better and let's go to the first one which is the comprehensive newborn screening system so education of relevant stakeholders is very important this is a collection so when you say comprehensive newborn screening we're not, we're not just talking about the newborn screening test but the system itself so we have to educate the relevant stakeholders from the family from the basic unit of the society the up to the government we have to educate them and perhaps with what's happening right now so i'm filming i'm filming this video right now what that we are in the enhanced community quarantine and maybe when you look back after years from now and look at this video and listen to this video 
um maybe some of us would actually agree that a lot of us now in the, in this pandemic is unprepared because we're uneducated about a lot of things with regards to public health concerns to, to virology and even physical and health hygiene okay so humuhugot na naman tuloy ako so aside from that we also um talk about the collection and biochemical screening of the blood and this is done by the medical technologist by the way medical laboratory scientist so shout out to all of um my kapatid all over the world so track aside from that we also have to track and confirm the test so when we discussed this um the basic the six er- inborn errors of metabolism we actually did some screening and confirmatory tests so we have to track that so that we could also monitor those with the disease again we are collecting it for the mortality and morbidity records so again clinical evaluation and biochemical and medical confirmation of the test results is very important drugs and medical and even surgical management and dietary supplementation to address the heritable condition as also under the comprehensive newborn screening and this is very good okay um hindi ito yung kapag nalaman niya iiwan ka na lang niya bigla ah may hugot what not that's not the case so what we're talking about here is that even the government would actually support or even do its job in helping families with um this condition take for example nala take for example your RA8504 your um our AIDS law okay our AIDS law that even though um after being confirmed with HIV okay so the government also provide aid to our um patients as well so aside from that you also have to evaluate the activities to assess long term outcomes and patient outcome and of course quality assurance and it's, that's very important and again i cannot overemphasize quality assurance and i know you're too familiar or sabihin na natin malapit na kayong manawa sa quality assurance but that's very important even in this part so aside from that we also do follow up when we monitor the newborn so that's very um self explanatory so the health institutions be it a hospital a health infirmary a health center a lying in center a puriculture center or a, whether public or or private needs to have or needs to follow the mandate of this law So whether you your babies or your newborn has been delivered in a lying in or a clinic, a health center, a hospital, you have to have them um screened. So take for example, what if your your baby was um delivered at home and you and your midwife doesn't have those tests? Again, you go back to the ano, you go back to the 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 guidelines. For as long as um you take your baby within three days, that's the allowable delay. Okay, three, three days. This is the reason why even if most pair most mothers take for example in provinces, in rural area, even if they actually deliver their um babies at home, eventually they will be advised to visit a doctor immediately. Okay, so. What else do we have? We also have the healthcare practitioners. So we have the physician, the nurses, the midwives, the nurse, nursing aides, the traditional birth attendants, and of course, let's not forget the medical laboratory scientists. Baka magtampo. So heritable condition. We talk about condition that can result in mental retardation, physical deformity, or even death. So it can either be due to mutation, due to um traits or recessive or dominant traits that have been expressed. in your infant okay so the nih stands for stands for national institute of health again that is under the up manila university of the philippines manila so aside from that we also have newborn meaning when we say newborn this is a child from the time of a complete delivery to 30 years old so newborn under one month okay so newborn screening again is the process of collecting a few drops of blood from the newborn onto an appropriate collection card which is your absorbent filter card and performing biochemical testing for determining if the newborn has a heritable condition so either of the six 
And of course, the newborn screening center um, is the facility equipped with a newborn screening laboratory that complies with the standards, whether it be it in the screening and even in the confirmatory. And of course, we have the newborn screening reference center. This is the central facility at the NIH that defines testing and follow-up protocols, maintains an external laboratory proficiencies and national database. And this is the one located at the UP. Ayala Techno Hub, the University of the Philippines, Manila, NIH. So go visit that. Okay. So again, it's very important to have parent education. Okay. So for us to provide the parents and legal guardians very vital information with regards to the newborn screening. Aside from that, we also do um, locating a newborn. We do recall, especially when they did not perform um, and newborn screening or even if they did, we will still be monitoring them. So, of course, we also have your treatment and this is now the provision of a prompt, appropriate and adequate medicine, medicinal and surgical management of dietary prescription to a newborn for the purpose of treating or mitigating the adverse health consequence, consequences that, that might be experienced. So, for Article 3, this is now more about the newborn screening. So, again, for Section 8, continuing education and re-education and training health professional. As you can see, I am not going to read it anymore because I am, uh, I'm not here to read it for you, but somehow to discuss it and to deepen the, the discussion. So, as you can see, if you can remember... In quality assurance, we have your internal and external quality assurance. And part of the external quality assurance is actually proficiency testing. And the one that does the proficiency testing is your personnel. Because in quality control, we do want to check three things. The stability of your machine, the credibility or the quality of your reagent, and of course, the competence of your personnel. And one thing th that we can do is to actually send them to continuing education, re-education, and even training. So even after you graduate as medical technologists, as nurses, as physicians, the learning doesn't stop there. That's why I am actually a very um a very passionate a very passionate um um a very passionate um advocate when it comes to doing our um when promoting actually our learning even more. So you have to learn how to learn even more. So aside from that, we also have licensing and accreditation. So this talks about more about the licensing because not all hospitals are capable or are being mandated or being commissioned by the DOH and the NIH to perform your um to perform your newborn screening. So the DOH and the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation shall require health institution to provide newborn screening services as a condition for licensure and accreditation. So most of the time, they actually would collect it in most hospitals, but they will not be the one to test it. They will be sending it to the newborn screening centers that we mentioned a while back. Okay? So again, how many how many hours would you wait before you send it? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is 4, 4 hours. Alright. Okay, so for the implementation, the lead agency, of course, for this um, law is the Department of Health. So they are the one that will be establishing advisory com advisory committee on the newborn screening. Aside from that, they will also be the one to develop the implementing rules and regulations for the immediate implementation of an, a nationwide newborn screening program within 108 days from the enactment of this act. They also are the one that will be coordinating with the Department of the Interior and Local Government or your DILG for the implementation of your national of your newborn screening programs all over the Philippines. And it's very important. Again, what we want is to prevent preventable diseases. Diba? And I hope everyone um actually that is what they want as well. Okay. So the advisory committee, speaking of that, on our newborn screening, on the other hand, they their job is actually to ensure sustained interagency collaboration. So as you can see, when we talk about a public health concern, it doesn't just concern hospital or her laboratory. It concerns every stakeholder of the society, from the barangay, from the family, from the household, from the 
even the 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 barangay official, the government officials, and eventually all stakeholders of the um community as well. So integral part of the office of the secretary of the DOH. So this is one integral um job and part of the secretary of DOH. So they also are the one that review annual and recommend conditions to be included in the newborn screening panel of this order. So again, like what I was mentioning a while back from six newborn um from six conditions, we're actually up to 22 right now. I think 22 or 26 somewhere on that number. But I'll be giving that to you later on. So aside from that, they also are the one that review and recommends the newborn screening fee. So right now um the latest that was in their posting is actually 500 to 1500 pesos somehow affordable pa okay i'm actually thinking of an even uh a, a more pricey um rate but that's uh, that's the end uh, that's their rate only okay so for the advisory committee on newborn we actually have the eight members so we have the chairman of course of the the chairman, which is the secretary of DOH, an executive director of the NIH, the undersecretary of the DILG, executive director of the welfare of children, director of the newborn screening Left reference centers, a three, three representative appointed by the secretary of health, whether it be it one pediatrician, obstetrician, endocrinologist, family physician, a nurse, or a midwife. I hope they also would include medtechs here. <laughs> By the way, so they all have three years subject. Um, the terms will be three years subject to reappointment for another three years. And of course, we also have the NIH Secretariat Committee to complete the advisory committee on newborn screening. Okay, so for the establishment now and accreditation of newborn screening centers, every single national screening newborn screening centers are strategically located. So well, when we were discussing the the map a while back we have one in Ilocos Norte one in Pampanga one in South Luzon we also have one here in Metro Manila we also have one in Visayas and one in Mindanao so all are strategically um placed so that every um everyone all around the Philippines would be catered with this service so aside from that we also recall and follow up programs for infants found positive for any and all of the inheritable conditions that they had so they also would be supervising and st um, staffing by trained personnel who have been duly qualified by the nih and of course submit to periodic announce and unannounced inspection of the reference center so yeah that's true some are surprised some are actually announced and some are just hey man we're here surprise and we're gonna inspect your center so so much about that let's go to the establishment now of a newborn screening reference center it is the nih that should be the one to establish the newborn screening reference center again which is found in up um techno hub so they actually have the national testing database the case registries training technical assistance and even continuing education for laboratory staff isn't it so it's the laboratory the laboratory staff who does that but there i hope they would also be part of the advisory committee as well okay aside from that we also have quality assurance and again it's very important so the nih is responsible for drafting and ensuring good laboratory practice standards for newborn screening centers so if you're gonna ask me what is the reference um laboratory for your um newborn screening um, for your newborn screening, it would actually be the the UPNIH, okay, the University of the Philippines National Institute of Health, because they are the one that performs or that um gives proficiency or external quality assurance program for different institutions. So they also are the one that establish an external laboratory proficiency testing, like what I was saying a while back, and certification program. And they are the principal repository of technical information relating to newborn screening standards and practices. So aside from that, the technical assistance is also provided by the NIH to newborn screening centers needing such assistance. Okay, so 
this is actually the component of the Philippine newborn screening. We have the screening, we have the management, the diagnosis, and the follow-up. And at the center, as you can see, how important quality assurance because, again, if you're going to look back with quality assurance, we talk about the confidence interval, we talk about the diagnostic efficiency, the diagnostic sensitivity, specificity, and maybe you're hearing false positive, false negative, and you know it better now. And you actually have would be able to explain why do we have false positive and why do we have false negative test results so so much about that let's go to the database so again the database is being maintained by the nih the reference center for your newborn screening for your newborn screening so nbs reference center shall maintain a national database of patient tested and registry of each of the six conditions actually the 22 conditions so the na newborn Screening reference centers should also submit a report annually to the committee, the advisory committee to be exact, and to the DOH on the status of, of irrelevant information derived from the database. Okay, so for the newborn screening fees, I guess I am nearing the end of this discussion. We also have the testing costs, of course, the education, sample transport, follow-up costs, and reasonable overhead expenses for our um for our um patients so the advisory committee is the one that will be assigning it they will be the one as well to implement and make sure that there will be no overpricing of the newborn screening fee okay so so much about that let's have a quick summary we actually have with your ra 9288 or the new um newborn screening act of 2004 we have 19 sections compartmentalized into five different articles the first one is about general provision the definition of terms the newborn screening the implementation and of course the final provision this law was approved april 7 2004 by the former president of the philippines um former president gloria makapagal arroyo okay so I uh, let's go to the quick updates. So this is what I am talking about. So the DOH approves the expanded newborn. So from six, from the six congenital hypothyroidism, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, hyperplasia. Rat. So phenylketonuria, glucose six phosphate dehydrogenase, and your your galactosemia and your MSUD has been expanded. It will now include twenty two more disorders now we include hem um, hemoglobinopathies and other metabolic diseases as well so um aside from that um we also have ayan it's here some hemoglobinopathies additional metabolic orders that in that um talks about organic acid fatty acid oxidation and amino acid disorder so as you can see the first option is actually a screening of six disorders the six that uh, that was first mentioned in this discussion which actually cost 550 pala, one, 550 pesos or you can actually have it um, for a full compl uh, complement of this order at 1,500 pesos. So at present, there's an ongoing discussion with PhilHealth to increase subsidy for expanded newborn screening. So... So from six, we now have 22 tests and that is a lot to, to tell you. But again, that is for, um, we're saying here, um, and we're saying here 22, okay, 22 more. But in total, we have 28 disorders now. So that is where the 28 is coming from in my mind. So from six, now we have 28 disorders being screened for our newborn. So I hope you did learn something. So if you haven't watched the first part of this video, please um, do check it. I will also try to give the link in the description box. So we are finished discussing the newborn screening, the inborn error of metabolism. We also have finished now the RA9288. And of course, we did some updates for our newborn screening act of 2004 from 6 to 28 tests being performed. So, so much about that. Again, I leave you with this um, quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Again, intelligence plus character. That is the true goal of education. So, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment down below or email me 
on this email or send me an email. Alright? So, thank you so much. This has been Jomar Adams. So, again, leaving you this, leaving you um, tonight, leaving you today with my own, sabihin na natin, my own saying, strive today so tomorrow you will thrive. Thank you so much and have a great day.